point we're trying to make here is like these are minor little problems. Uh, and these are DIY stuff, but if you look at Yellowstrom, you know, what's happening over in Europe is going to happen here. You know, our, our utility companies here are going to start pushing this stuff out, and they need to see that stupid little stuff like this needs to be fixed before they roll it out to the masses. So where's all the data going? I mean, we said Twitter, we said Facebook before, and I don't know what that was. It just went by the screen. <laughs> or that one. But uh, <laughs> it could be going one of those. Google Power Meter. Anybody here use this? Okay. What? What? <laughs> oh. Alcohols, yes. Okay. <laughs> nice. Um, so there's a lot of here about Google Power Meter. Uh, they want you to join the community so you can share your energy usage and share how to save energy and stuff like that. Um, not quite as egregious as the next slide, Microsoft's product um, or solution or something, but still there's a community feature here. And just like iGoogle, um, and you'll see uh, later in our slides, people share this information with you, uh, not necessarily understanding the consequences. All right, so uh, like you said, what Google does, Microsoft does, right? So, eh, easy. <laughs> All right, so uh, as you see up there, this is Microsoft Home. Uh, this is their p power monitoring usage website. Um, important thing to note here, what does that say? How does your energy usage compare to others in your area? Are you using more energy than your neighbors? Who would be interested in that? Do you remember a slide about 10 slides ago? Basically said about someone's neighbor, maybe this guy's neighbor, who was growing something, using a little bit more energy usage. So can the feds, can the police, use Microsoft Home or Google Power Meter to identify who's growing weed in, their, in that neighborhood? Can they? Can they not? This is something that the, uh, the courts may have to decide later on. Like one more thing before you change the site. If any of you guys have your computer fired up, literally go to Microsoft Ohm's site and it'll say, what's your address? And you just key that stuff in and it'll be like, all right, here's what your neighbors or their average uh, use is for this. Here's what it is for this. It's just, that's Microsoft. Google's making their own. This stuff is going to become, I mean, we already have the subpoenas now for IP information for, you know, everything under the sun that people are violating, right? So it's just another mechanism in which that people might have their privacy violated. So where this presentation actually becomes relevant. Um, thank you for sitting with us so far. We appreciate it. Getting back to what I said before, um, you know, just because you can doesn't mean you should. The inverse of that really is, is because you can means people will. So here's some examples of people who have posted their energy usage. And I don't know if you guys can read that. Um, but if you want, if you're on Twitter now, go ahead and search the hashtag tweetawatt. So by default, when you uh, use the scripts for the tweetawatt, you go ahead and it throws that hashtag on the end of your tweets. So if you don't know how to modify Python script or delete that really hard clear text thing, uh, it'll show up uh, by default. So like you can see here, KJK, this is his closet tweetawatt. Uh, tweetawatt. Uh, so apparently he has much of them, more to come on him. And uh, Chris tweeted a while, apparently he is like dominating Twitter and then hashtag because he posts all the time. But so KJ, right, uh, we see his closet Twitter uh, tweet a lot. So if you click on his profile, <laughs> he shows you his Google Power Meter info. And it has like his today's usage, this week's usage, and this month's usage. And it's all like Googleified, so you can use a slider and see his peaks and valleys and all that good fun stuff. And it's just like right there, hey, come check it out. Here's you know, I didn't think I don't think he thought he'd end up on a DEF CON slide, but so if that's not enough, how about our buddies Andy in his house? Uh, I don't think you're definitely gonna be able to read that. Uh, but so here, let me read you the first one. Lights turned off three minutes ago. <laughs> the one below that says, the phone is ringing. And then in parentheses, it has Isle of Right, which means he's tweeting his caller ID. <laughs> that could be real bad, like if you're having something on the side <laughs> and she keeps calling the house. Say again. <laughs> nice. 
<laughs> so the next one, uh, you can have a Facebook app that shows your energy usage. This one, it's called What's Up. I don't know if like he just stopped using it when I took this screenshot. But this was taken a while ago, like in uh, in February. But on the on the right side there, it says his uh, his current energy usage as of the date is 458 watts. But then it has like all the breakdown information at zero. So either his What's Up or What's Up, sorry, app is broken, or he's not home. I don't get it. Um, but some other examples. Universities love Facebook too, and why would you not want to post information about your building's energy usage? Not as juicy or fun, I'd say, as a person doing it, um, but still interesting. And, and you definitely can't read it, but it says like in three in a row, it's like, ugh, we had a bad day today. Ugh, we had a bad day today. So it's like you think it might be somebody actually posting this, but it's obviously a script. And then when you go over to Twitter and you see the University of Mississippi, like I think like the third one down here says the same thing. Ugh, we had a bad day today, which makes me think they may be using the same scripts. Mm. So what's the big deal besides me taking Tony's slide? <laughs> All right. Anybody have a guess of what the big deal is yet? Anyone see that site before? Anyone ever use it? Please rob me. Love the site. For those of you that aren't familiar with it, it basically grabs messages from Twitter, Facebook, whatever, and basically shows when people are not at home. What's cool about pleaserobme.com is like people who used Foursquare but didn't get it, like they actually got it when they saw Please Rob Me, like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be telling people where I am all the time. And this is, and I'm going to be like, uh, I don't know. For the security people who use TripIt all the time, don't throw stuff at me, but seriously, stop using TripIt. I don't want to get my LinkedIn status updates telling me that you're about to leave for seven days to go someplace, and I know you're a single dude. <laughs> Half a crap, that's cool. <laughs> so, risky business. Uh, what does this mean? Like, I kind of teed it up before, but the more data we provide, the... Uh, that's interesting. The more data we provide, the more others are able to profile our behavior, like Tony and his tool in a minute. Uh, simple profiling, what does that lead to? Potentially criminal behavior, like please rob me, or uh, law enforcement, like we talked about with the grow houses. And, uh, and you can also compare to profiling. I'm using a lot more. Why am I using a lot more? Now, does that become a probable cause or what? Some of the future implications, right? So right now, this is pretty elementary stuff, right? It's all basically consumer grade. You know, half of what we showed you is you doing it yourself. So very few people are doing it, but we really showed you some examples, right? So as the, the technology matures, we're looking at potentially remote controlling of devices, like I said, air conditioning, lights, power during the Super Bowl. That would suck if Tony DOS my television. Uh, or trigger-based events, like I said, turning down the AC. You could have a lot of fun with that, like, like my buddy. Um, it may seem like not that big of a deal right now. This, like I said, may seem all elementary, but Tony had a little fun with uh, Perl. Yeah, I think Perl, not Python. Sorry, Nathan. All right, so uh, now we get into the actual tool. So we call it energy. I don't really remember why we called it energy, but it is called energy. The point of it is that it's going to download the energy usage tweets. So you give it a Twitter profile that you found, and it actually goes out there and it'll start caching all of those energy usage tweets that people are posting up there. Now, it's also going to profile their energy usage to determine when they're home, when they're not. And I'm sure you guys can figure out where we're going with this. Now, there's one minor kink in our problem, and uh, Justin and I's get rich quick scheme. If we're going to rob someone, which we are not advocating doing, what do we need in addition to when they're home, when they're not? Street address. We need to know where they are, right? So, Twitter profile. Twitter's API allows you to download a lot of detailed information about that actual Twitter account. Now, if you notice the, uh, the arrows, the yellowed out parts, you'll see location. This normally includes New York City, New York, but then down below, you'll actually see coordinates, location-aware devices, posting their GPS coordinates. This is definitely possible. Um, now, you see that we actually put, we hard-coded in the GPS coordinates of a certain location because, frankly, we didn't want to tell you people where we live. I mean, you know, I'm sure you, you guys probably figured it out in about five minutes, but, hey, at least we're not going to post our information. All right, so what else? What if, the, uh, what if the Twitter profile does not contain GPS coordinates, location? 
Any thoughts of how to actually find this person? Google it, Facebook, all valid options. How about uh, something something even easier? What is it? Tagged images. I like that. I didn't think of that. Future enhancements. Version 2.0. <laughs> all right. How about this? Who's following that tweet a lot? Four people. Do you think it's the? Uh, do you think it's option number one? If it's <laughs> if the uh, the account on the Tweetawat is Chris Tweetawat, and number four of the person who's following is named Chris J X, I'm gonna guess that that's the person who actually owns the Tweetawat. So why don't we click over and onto his profile? And I believe there is Chris Tweetawat. And if you notice, one of the uh, the top posts from it is Tendril's Hybrid HAN, or Home Area Network, which is a pretty big acronym in the smart grid industry. So I basically just got confirmation that this guy owns Tweetawat. And if you notice, location, San Francisco Bay Area, which was not provided on his Tweetawat page. So now we have full name and location. And then it becomes pretty trivial to actually find his, his physical address. All right, energy profiling. You guys probably can't see this. Uh, you can probably see the horizontal bar going across. But basically, uh, when we get on to the next slide, we'll show um, actually a more zoomed in picture. But basically, what we, sh we should be able to see here, this is a full day's energy usage that was just plotted out, I guess a little poorly. Uh, but from here, you'll actually be able to see peaks and valleys. When are they home? When are they not? Are they sleeping or are they active? So here's a better picture you guys may be able to see. So home and awake, away or asleep. If there's low energy usage, then most likely they're either not at home or they're sleeping. If there's high energy usage, they're either home or they're most likely home and awake. Can you guys actually see that? All right. Well, I mean, this is basically just a screenshot taken from the tool that we're about to, we're about to demo. All right. So now that we know when they're home, when they're awake, or when they're away, or when they're asleep, what else are we going to do? All right. First of the tools, in Rob. Predict the best time to rob the owner based on historical average energy usage. Predicts when they're not home or sleeping. Allows Darth Vader to rob your house or a bank. In stock. Maybe you're not a thief. Maybe you have someone that you like, and they don't actually like you back. What do you, what do, you to do? Stalk them, of course. All right, so this one will actually predict the best time to find someone when they're in their home, when the person is either home and awake or when they're sleeping, i.e. the best time to stalk them, apparently. All right, and uh, time for the, uh, to actually try out the demo. Any questions on waiting, anybody? Anything? Demo it is. You're going to have to leave there, so. You can turn the information for as long as they've had it, but uh, what is the, what's the rate with Twitter? Is it 100 messages? Yeah, so one of the issues with, sorry, one of the issues with Twitter is that their API limits you to, restricts you to basically 100 pages per hour. And I'll show you uh, something in a little bit that actually tends to compensate for that, um, basically the way that I, I, I got around it. Um, it's not a very technical way to do it, but it is what it is. So anyways, so anyways, yeah, basically this tool just archives all the tweets and then does a, some very simple math to actually figure out if they're home or they're not. All right, so the actual tool. Huh? Oh. What's that? Give this thing with the not live data. Not live data. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I actually see some pretty familiar faces here. So if you actually saw our ShmooCon talk, you'll know that we had a physical network layer problem during our demo. And so this time we're actually going to exclude all network issues. So basically before the presentation, I already went through and I downloaded all of our Tweetawatt's energy usage. But basically, if you're... If